Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, Brother Fred. Tonight, the title of the message is Active Faith versus Inactive Faith. Now, all of you are in Jesus. You've all received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you have been given faith. So everyone has faith, but the issue is, is it active? Are you using your faith? Mm -hmm. You know, the book of James, uh, chapter 2, verses 20 and 26, says inactive faith uh, is useless. Inactive faith is dead. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to have our faith active. And so we're really going to be focusing on active faith tonight. And uh, Romans 14, 23 says, uh, if, our, if it's not a faith, whatever we do, if it's mm -hmm. not a faith, it's sin. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I encourage us to do tonight is to activate our faith and exercise our faith. Uh, you know, faith is uh, like muscles. It's like muscles on our arms and on our legs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to exercise it. And uh, I love to talk about faith. I love to uh, uh, go back to faith from time to time. And so that we remember, we need to be exercising our faith. Otherwise, it, it, it grows inactive and it's not powerful. It's, right. It weak. becomes weak. If we don't exercise our faith, just like our muscles, we could tie an arm behind our back and it wouldn't be long till that arm, uh, the muscles in that arm would just become very, very weak and, and useless. And so we need to keep our faith active. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. How can we keep our faith active? Well, Everybody has faith uh, that's a Christian. Everybody has faith that's a Christian. As a matter of fact, we have to have faith to even become a Christian. Um, the Lord gives us that faith. We are saved uh, uh, through grace by faith. faith. And so uh, he gives us, he's gracious. Isn't, isn't he gracious to give sinners faith so that we can be saved? And so that's why it all started. He uh, saw us. He loved us. He drew us mm -hmm. to himself. He prepared for us uh, and he gave us faith. And then Romans uh, 12 verse 3 says, every person that is among you, among the Christians, all the Christians have a measure of faith. So we all start at the same point. Uh, we have a measure of faith. And so you don't have more faith than me and I don't have more faith than you in the beginning. But we can activate our faith and exercise it and grow it so that it becomes more effective. And I want to start by saying there is a difference between uh, people who have active faith and people who have inactive faith. And I want to go to uh, tell you a story about a man uh, whose name was Smith Wigglesworth. Now, Smith Wigglesworth was an Englishman but uh, he eventually ministered all over the world. But when he was six years old, uh, he had to go into work. And he started work at the age of six because there were no child labor laws in England. And he was born in the 1860s and there were no child labor laws. And so when children came along, they, they sent them into the manufacturing factories. or into mining. Or, and so he never went to school. Uh, a day of his life, and he never learned to read until he married. He married a woman, and her name was Polly, and, and she worked for the Salvation Army, and she was a Christian, and so she, Polly taught Smith to read. He's an adult after he was married, and the only thing he could read was his Bible, mm -hmm. and uh, his faith was just uh, profound. And it's good for us to look for people who are further down the road uh, and, and are operating in a higher level of faith than we are so that we can learn from them. Now, with Smith, uh, he had such powerful faith, uh, a lot of people got offended by him because he had a different uh, level of faith than other people. Uh, because he believed God and he acted on the word. He acted on what he believed. 
And I'll give you a couple of examples. And then I'm going to uh, ask Sherry to read us a few things, a few of the quotes of Smith Wigglesworth. Now, here's a man that raised 14 people from the dead. And he had a lot of faith. And he went all over the world uh, teaching about love and faith and, and the word of God. And again, he was not educated. This is what the Holy Spirit did through a man that was uneducated. And uh, I'll give you two examples first. And one time uh, he went into a, uh, a home where there was a dead person. Uh, the Lord sent him there and, and there was a dead body in a casket on a table. And so he Smith ran everybody out of the room and he grabbed the dead body and he drug it out of the casket and he took it over against a wall and he slammed it against the wall and he said, walk in the name of Jesus. And the body fell down because he's a dead man, <laughs> okay? And the people in the family, they were looking through the uh, window <laughs> and, and, and they were looking at what he was doing and they're, thinking, they're getting mad because this was a relative, a loved one. And uh, and so they didn't have the same faith that uh, Smith Wigglesworth had. Right. And so he grabbed him a second time, slammed him up against the wall and said, walk in the name of Jesus. And th these other people, they didn't have the same level of faith and they were getting very mad. And they uh, he had ran them out of the room. He'd run them out of the room because they were non-believers. And, and so they were real mad at him. They may have been Christians, but they just didn't. They didn't have their faith active like he did. And so the man fell down uh, because he was a dead man. And so then Smith and the people outside and the family were getting really mad at Smith. So he grabbed this dead body, slammed him against the wall a third time. And he said, walk in the name of Jesus. And the man was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And he began walking. What I want you to see is that Smith Wigglesworth operated at a different level than a lot of people. And all those people around him got very mad at him because people who are operating with active faith, see, that's going to offend people who, whose faith, faith is, is inactive. inactive. That's the so truth. We're, we're talking about these two extremes today, active faith versus inactive faith. Amen. Now, Amen. a second example I want to give you is that one time Smith Wigglesworth was in a meeting. He was up on the platform and a woman had come up and had a, a big garter uh, that was just sticking out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right here in the middle of it. Oh, is that where it yeah. is? Okay, so he just slammed it. He hit it with his fist mm -hmm. and nothing happened. And the, and the men that were around him, the pastors, oh, they got mad, said, well, what's he doing? We're, we're He's gonna hurting go, her. We're going to go up there and stop him. And so he hit it again, hit that garter again. And, and the people, the pastors and all the ministers around him, they got very mad at him for hitting this uh, garter. And then he turned, he reached back and he hit it again and it disappeared. Hallelujah. Okay, so his faith, see, he, he was a, attacking not the woman but the devil i mean his, his uh, uh when there's a, a demonic influence in a life then you address the demonic influence and that's what he did mm -hmm. he came against the devil a and the people around him whose faith was inactive uh they got very mad at him because people who have active faith is going to become uh, that's going to make others with inactive faith offended. Mm. And so we don't want to get offended, but we want to learn by what people that have faith at a higher level than we do, let's learn from them. So Sherry and I read several books. Uh, mm. Now, Smith Wigglesworth never wrote a book of himself, but he preached messages and people transcribed those messages and put them into a book, different messages. And when Sherry and I read them, when we were young in the Lord, we read some of these books. And it was, he had so much depth of understanding and about faith and about God's love. And it really helped us. It challenged us to yes. want to go and exercise our faith so that we would have faith at a higher level. Now, if people are, do not want to get their faith to a higher level, 
then they become offended because there are different views. And I want to just let you, let Sherry just read uh, uh, three of his quotes. There are many quotes that he said in these books, uh, but these were just some I picked out about prayer and faith. And so I'll ask Sherry to read them. And then I want you to show you that they are related to verses, okay? Okay. Life comes after you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Get down and pray for power. Now that's the quote from Smith Wigglesworth. And then here's the verse that goes with it. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. It says, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Okay, it says the spirit gives life. And what he said, his quote was, life comes from the spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. life comes because that it's the spirit that gives life. Now, the reason I want to point these things out, sometimes we read the scriptures and, and we think we know what they say, mm -hmm. but but when you are around people who are anointed of the Lord, they may say things in a different way that gives us different light on it. And that what Smith said in that case was that life comes when we are filled with the spirit of God because the spirit gives life. Now let's look at another one. Okay. I'll only pray for you once. To pray twice is unbelief. That's what Smith Wigglesworth said. Right. I'm only going to pray one time for you. Right. Okay. But this is the scripture that goes along with that. It's Matthew uh, chapter six, verse seven. And when you are praying, do not use thoughtless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Okay. So what we see here is when we have a problem, there's a real tendency for us to pray that problem over and over again. We want to keep asking God, come fix our problem, fix our problem. Mm -hmm. So today we ask him to fix our problem. Tomorrow we ask, we him, ask to him to fix our problem. Well, it's not a very effective way to pray. Jesus said, don't use these vain repetitions. And Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm just going to pray one time. I'm not going to pray for you another time because that would negate my first prayer. It would say that I didn't believe the first time. So if I pray one time uh, mm -hmm. for something, mm -hmm. and then I th feel like I have to pray another time, that meant I didn't believe the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, then we can learn a lot. This is a man with profound faith, enough to raise 14 people from the dead. And so we need to be challenged and exercise our faith to believe. Okay, I've got Here's one a, other thing. Yeah, last one. God dwells in you, but you cannot have this divine power until you live and walk in the Holy Ghost, until the power of the new life is greater than the old life. I love that quote. That's wonderful. Here's the scripture that goes with it. Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will no longer desire the things of the flesh. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what he said there, it's one thing to know that we have the spirit with us, but he said, in order to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, we have to walk in the spirit and uh, we have to uh, live in the spirit. That's when we begin having the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our life. So what I, what I want you to see from this is that there are different ways to look at verses. And if we just keep going back to the same verses and looking at them the same way, then we're going, to, uh, we're going to miss the depth of it. And we need to be around people who have active faith and that would encourage us to uh, increase in our faith and and um, exercise our faith. And that's what, what, that's what this message is about tonight, exercising our faith. It, I, I know that everybody listening to me has faith, faith, but have you been exercising it 
on a regular basis. And so what we're going to talk about tonight then is how can we activate uh, our faith? Uh, you know, Colossians uh, chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 says, uh, seek those things which are above mm -hmm. where Christ sits at the right hand of God. And so we're to seek these things and set our affections on things above. Set our affections on things above. And so we are presented choices every day. And so let me, and, and we could all say, well, yes, I, I agree with that verse. I, I, I believe that verse. Well, do you act on that verse? And, and so let me give you some choices uh, from the scriptures and, and see whether or not you do these things or you set your affection on these things. It, it says, you find your life by, you find your spiritual life by losing your natural life. Woo, so are you doing that? This is a choice we have to make every day. I'm going to find my spiritual life by losing my natural life. You know, Jesus said, mm, if you're going mm. to follow me, you've got to lay down your life. That's your natural life and pick up his life, a, a spiritual life, a supernatural life. Uh, that's the first thing. Well, uh, here's another choice that we're giving and given in the scriptures. We need to give in order to receive. Oh, glory to God. Now, is that is that mm -hmm. one that you're, that's one of the things that are happening in the higher realm. That's the, uh, the eternal realm. And so we're always given these choices to seek the higher realm or the lower realm. And the lower realm mm -hmm. would be, mm -hmm. The natural to, realm would be to hoard up, but we're told to give. Hallelujah. And so uh, another verse, a decision that we have to make every day is, are we going to store up our treasure, treasure in, heaven. in heaven or are we going to store up our treasure on earth? Mm, See, mm, mm, we've mm. got this trade off every day. There are these decisions that have to be made in order for us to exercise our faith. We have to be choosing these higher alternatives, the eternal things. So are we going to lay down our natural life, take up a higher life? Are we going to sacrifice worldly pleasures in order to receive eternal rewards? See, oh, that's, hallelujah. Now, those are kinds of decisions mm -hmm. we have to make every day. And we're going to have to. We're going to exercise our faith. We have to take up the higher, the scriptural things, because it said, set your affections on things above. above. And we can look at that verse and say, oh, yes, I do that. I set my affections on things above. But are you laying down your life, natural mm. life, picking up the eternal life? Are you giving to receive a reward? Are you sacrificing worldly pleasures for eternal rewards? Are you sowing mm -hmm. in order to reap? Are you storing up treasures in heaven? Or are you storing up treasures on earth? So these are some decisions that we have to deal with and make these choices every day. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, I sit before you life and death. death. Choose life. And so I've just laid out a few things there. The scriptures have many, many more things to say. Well, and also in Deuteronomy, <coughs> it says, I lay before you blessings are curses. And we want to stay in the, in the blessings of God. So as we think about active faith, how do we active? How do we uh, have active faith? Well, you know it says meditate on the Word of God. Amen. Day Amen. and night. Amen. See our mind. Yeah, think here, on it. Think on it. Our mind is a battleground, and if the devil can w win in our thinking, if he can take over, if carnal thinking is in our mind, if we're thinking about what the news is saying, if we're thinking about what the uh, economy is doing, if we're thinking about those things, that's all natural. 
and, and then we lose the battle. The battle is in the mind. Mm -hmm. Now, if we love God, if we truly love God, we will love the things about God. Mm -hmm. we, if we, for example, if I love my spouse, as I do, then I have to love the things about her. I have to love her, her nature. I have to know about her nature, and I have to know about her thinking and well, what she's doing and her activities. I have to love all of those things. So I, so I can't say I love my wife and then say, but I don't love what she says and I don't love what she does and I don't love this and I don't love that about her. Well, I mean, that's inconsistent. That's right. It's the same thing with God. If I say I love God, then I have to love the things about God. I have to love his way. I have to love his will. And how do I find that those things out? I find them in the word of God. And so I have to love his word. I have to love mm -hmm. the word of God. If I really love God, I have to love his word enough to read his word, to study his word. Uh, I believe uh, Smith Wigglesworth said there are four principles we need to involve related uh, to the word of God. He said, first, read God's word. Second, uh, read it and consume it. And so the second one is consume God's word until it consumes you. The third is believe his word. And the fourth is act on his word. Amen. So Amen. Smith Wigglesworth was not just talking about a casual reading of it. Uh, because he threw in that one about consume his word until it consumes you. Okay, so this this is a way, if we love God, we're going to love the things about God, and we're going to find out those things in his word. So it means we'll love his word, and we will love his spirit, because his spirit is just like he is, and his son, Jesus, is just like uh, the father is. And so they're all just alike. And so we have to love all of these things. We have to love his word. We have to love his spirit. And I like what Smith said, uh, we quoted earlier, uh, life about the life. <laughs> life comes when you're filled with the Holy spirit. And, right. and, and so we need to, uh, love his word and meditate on his word. Uh, you know, uh, Psalm one, one talks about Blessed is the person who meditates Thanks on the, the word. word day and night. Now, meditation uh, in, for Christians is different than Eastern meditation. Eastern meditation is getting your mind empty and not, not thinking about the things, but God's meditation is filling it up with the word. Oh, hallelujah. And thinking about the word and thinking about the word. No, See, Job, Joshua chapter one, verse eight says that we'll meditate on the word, word and then we'll make our way successful. That's we'll right. Be, prosperous. We'll be prosperous. We'll be successful when we meditate on the word. So the battle is in the mind. If we're going to have active faith, We've got to love the word of God. And we've got to love his spirit because his spirit reveals his word to us and makes it living. It brings it to life. You have to think on the word. And then we begin to meditate on it day and night. You know, it didn't just say day, mm -hmm. but it said day and night. And so we're taking those thoughts. And then, you know, there's a, a verse that says, Take every thought. thought. So the thoughts that rise up against the knowledge of God, we take those captive. And it's like a, a, a soldier that was coming against us and coming mm -hmm. against the kingdom of God. We capture that soldier. But not only do we capture that soldier, we turn them around by sharing the love of God with them. And so they become a soldier for Christ. So these thoughts that come against the knowledge of God, we take every one of them captive unto the obedience of Christ. So we turn those thoughts around so they are obedient to Christ. 
So it's not just knocking a thought down and, and saying, I'm not going to think that anymore. We're going to turn yeah. things around. We're going to replace it. So we're, wherever they started with a disobedient thought, and maybe it's something that we had heard on the news and we began to meditate on that. And maybe it said the economy is going to crash or, or uh, gasoline prices are going to rise. We began to mm -hmm. meditate and think on those things. And, and we have to take those thoughts and turn them to the point that we're thinking about Christ and what Christ is saying mm -hmm. on the matter. Amen. So casting down every thought and, and taking control of it so that it becomes obedient to what Christ is saying. Now, we, this is the way that we have active faith. We've got to renew our thinking renew our mind we have to take every thought that's contrary to the knowledge of god we have to take it captive and turn it to the point that it is expressing christ's thoughts now that's pretty exciting to me and that's what he wants us to do not only does he want us to do it but we can do it we can take every thought so every thought we have about our children uh, not being successful, not serving the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, about sickness. So every one of those thoughts can be captured, can be mm -hmm. captured. Don't let it run wild in your thinking. Capture that thought. Oh, my children are not going to serve the Lord. Capture that thought. And what is it that Christ is telling you about your children? Your children are going to be brought up in the nurture and admonition yes, of the Lord. Taught of the Lord. And, and they're, going to, they're going to stay in the path of the righteous. So we have to take those thoughts and turn them, take them captive, mm -hmm. get control of them, and then turn them to obedience to Christ. Amen. Now, I hope that you understand the message tonight and the essence of the message tonight is we all need active faith. See, if our faith is not active, it is useless, it is dead. And, and ineffective. It, and ineffective and anything we're doing that's not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. we don't want to sin. No, we don't want to sin. So we've got to be doing the things we do. They all have to be by faith. Uh, so if we're doing our job by faith. By faith. If we're cooking, if by we're faith. Cooking, it's all by faith. If we're serving our family, it's by faith. If we're uh, uh, out there in the in the marketplace and buying groceries, it has to be by faith. You can't you can't have a part of your life and say this is my faith life, and this part over here is not my faith life because you'd have to label that as your sin life because mm. whatever. Mm -hmm is not a faith is sin. sin. I oh, hope wow. you be encouraged wow. by this message tonight that we need to exercise our faith and we need to start with our mind and keep thinking and meditating on God's word and the things of God and his spirit and let his spirit reveal his word because faith comes from the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by, by the, the word. word. But that word, see, the word of God has to be revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So we have to have the word of God and the revealed word of God and the Holy Spirit operating in our life so that we can keep our faith active. I, I hope oh, this yeah. message is Thank an encouragement you, to you. It is an encouragement to me that we need to keep our faith active and we're going to have to exercise it over and over and day by day. I'm